the incident that happened to the park and where I, I almost got shot, that's when I really started to like do my research and do my like due diligence so I knew what the hell was going on. You feel me? It, it's just so crazy how like everything connected to that park. Like the kid that they have on video that actually, that, sla that was slapping Pop Smoke when he was younger, that kid grew up in my neighborhood. Like he used to be in that park all the time. His name was Kiki. Kimani Gray. God yeah. rest the dead, cause he passed away also. But Kiki. Don't be no set off that vest and egging for the head. Y'all rats up cheese, rats and don't get down for the bread. Yeah, let him sleep. Yeah, let him sleep. Yeah, call it plug, cut me some bar for the week. Who's, who's smoking that trash? We smoking that gas. Is the swim team in the building? I said, is the swim team in the building? Let's drown these and get these gold medals. Squad, all right, so I was looking for a story to tell. I did put a post up asking what kind of stories y'all wanted to hear. And my boy, Screwface Gene, said not to be toxic, but I'm partial for them fighting hood story. This is kind of a hood story. It's not a fight story, but it's definitely a hood story. As you guys know, I grew up in Flatbush. I grew up on Utica Avenue. Growing up, I used to frequent Tilden Park to play basketball. I did go every everywhere else. I used to walk a lot. So I, I would walk to Wingate Park. I would walk to Nazareth Park. You feel me? Um, there's, I think there was a park in Bildersee. When I used to go to Kanashi by my aunt crib, we used to like bike it or walk to Bildersee Park. Like we, we used to do a lot. But in Tilden Park, you know, that that's where I frequent. That was the hood. So in 2007, when I left, granted I was happy to be in another state, I just always couldn't wait to come back. I always couldn't wait to come back. But the thing that was crazy is every time I came back to New York, something happened. In 2008, I came back, they robbed my crib. Well, it wasn't really a robbery, it was cat burglary. There's a difference, okay? Somebody cat burglarized my crib when I went to play basketball. The whole thing literally probably happened in like five minutes. Five minutes. I remember leaving the crib, going to the court. There was nobody on the court. I walked back. My aunt asked me like, yo, why was you running up, running around upstairs? I'm like, yo, why, what you mean why I was running around upstairs? She's like, why was you jumping around, running around upstairs? I'm like, I, there was nobody upstairs. I, went, I just came from playing ball. I opened my door, all my stuff was gone. Xbox, jeans, um, all my sneakers, I had some Pradas, those were gone. The laptop that I had my schoolwork saved on. The dirtiest thing I could remember from that whole situation was they went through my dirty clothes, dumped all my dirty clothes out, and took all the True Religion jeans that were in there. I had like four pairs of True Religions in the dirty clothes that was supposed to be washed that Saturday. They, they went in there and took all that. All right. Then in 2009, I went back and Somebody tried to rob me in front of Kennedy's on Snyder and to put his ass to sleep. Bing, bing, bing. Knocked his ass out cold. You feel me? And after that, I think that was the one where I was like, no, 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 no. no. I'm a t so those two things happened. And it, it was another incident where somebody tried to rob me on Church Ave, like when I got off the 35 bus. But out of all of those, I think the one that scared me the most was me almost getting shot in Tilden Park. I almost got shot in Tilden Park in broad daylight. With the whole situation wasn't even meant for me. Alright, so I'm gonna break that down to you. So right now we listen to all these rappers. You listen to the um the Wools, the Chos, you got Fabio Farn, you have uh um Pop Smoke, God Rest the Dead, you have 22 G's. So 22 G's and them they folk and I believe they the Chos, Fabio Foreign and Pop Smoke and all of them, they the Wolves. Now, before it was Wolves and Chos, it was Hood Stars and Wave Gang. Nine, right? 2011, it was Hood Stars and Wave Gang. I remember getting calls from my aunt and talking to my little cousin and it was talking about Hood Stars and Wave Gang. They like going at it up. The incident that happened to the park and where I, I almost got shot, 
that's when I really started to like do my research and do my like due diligence so I knew what the hell was going on. You feel me? It, it's just so crazy how like everything connected to that park. Like the kid that they have on video that asked that slap that was slapping pop smoke when he was younger. That kid grew up in my neighborhood. Like he used to be in that park all the time. His name was Kiki. Kimani Gray. God rest the dead, cause he passed away also. But Kiki and the Morales twins. <laughs> yo, Kiki was bad as hell. I'ma tell you this. Yo. We used to be playing ball. Kiki would come in the middle of the game and take the ball and run and like throw it and just run out the park. And he's probably like six years old doing that. You feel me? Six or seven. I say six or seven. Then the Morales twins, those were like his henchmen. And I call them the Morales twins because they, um, me and their brother had like a heated ass basketball rivalry. You feel me? I remember when I, before I actually moved over there, before I lived over there, I used to visit. And every summer, me and this man would be outside for like two to three hours just playing one on one. From 12 to like 13, our game was kind of, you know, it was kind of close. But from 14 up, like you could just see the gap in our talent level. And he was getting faster. He was left-handed. He used to shoot. Bro, I used to be so mad. And then he used to bust my ass in front of the whole park. Like, I'm going to keep it funky with you. I'll never... Come on here and and lie about nothing, bro. I'm not gonna come on, come on here, and fake the funk and make you feel like I was this type of person when when I lived in the hood. I was, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel as though I'm not gonna get any joy in lying about that, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna keep it funky. Earl used to bust my ass. Earl used to bust my ass. Then we had this other dude named Gamar. Gamar punk ass used to he shoot all type of weird, but them shit used to go in. He, he couldn't dribble for, yo, he couldn't dribble. He could not put the basketball on the floor at all. He had no, nothing. His, 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 his freaking handle package was zero. It was probably a negative five. But shooting, he was 90% from three. 90% from three. I'm not even going to lie. But anyway. That's the park, bro. I need to do a story time telling about talking about everybody in the park. But in 2011, I went back up. This was like during the height of the Hood Stars and Wave Gang movement, right? And you know, I'm in the park. I'm playing basketball. And you know, since I've been gone, it's a lot of new faces. But the old familiar faces are still there. So, so we played a few games. And you know, we having conversations and stuff like that. They add, a lot of them asking me about Atlanta because a lot of them planning, trying to move out of New York, trying to move out of Brooklyn. So I remember we was having this conversation after one of the games and you know, I seen some kids. It was three kids. They couldn't have been no older than 14 or 15, right? They walk on the, the block that is behind the gate. The way I, I park is is kind of gated. I forgot that street. I know it's for oh I think it's 48th. It's 48th. So the park is kind of on 48th and it's between 48th and 49th. Anyway, <clears throat> so anyway the kids walk behind the gate and they look in the park and then they just walk up to the other block, right? So we still out there talking or whatever. Then. They walked back down the block and they looked in the park again. Then they walked around and they walked by the playground. And I could see them like still looking over in that direction. But to be honest with you, I see them, but I'm not paying attention to them. You know what I mean? I'm not really, it's, it, it's not registering to me that anything crazy is about to happen. Then I see them again. This time they walking in the park, right? As soon as they walk in, one of them pull out a gun. And he pointed over in our direction. And the other two is like, yo, shoot his ass. Shoot his ass. That's him. Shoot his ass right now. That's him. So the other one is like, nah, yo, I don't think that's him. I don't think that's him. The one with the gun is like, I don't think that's him. 
But the other two is like, yo, that's him. Shoot his ass. All right. So the, while they're doing that, it's another kid that we grew up with, right? And he like walking in circles and he like, yo, what y'all doing? Really? That's what y'all on? That's what y'all on? So he's just making a big scene. And the kids are like, they're in the playground area and they like, yo, shoot his ass. Shoot his ass. And he just walking around making a big scene. Long story short, the kid didn't fire and all three of them ran out the park. So now the dude that's in the front, I forgot his name, bro. He's making a big scene like, yo, he, he called somebody on the phone. He like, yo, bro, come get me, bro. Come get me, bro. These young niggas try to, try to pop me just now. They try to pop me just now. Come get me, bro. Come get me, bro. So he start, like, asking people, yo, you can take him to the crib. You can take him to the crib. I'm about to go handle them. I'm about to go handle them. Now, I'm, I'm going to keep it funky, yo. Growing up, me and him never really saw eye to eye because he just... He didn't really seem genuine in his in his his movement. Like, you know, he he to me he was a poser. I'ma keep it funky, like son was a poser. He just was he was just a poser, bro. Like, I'm big on body language. And even even back then I was big on body language. So just off of his movement, he was just a poser. Now, he making all that big fuss and we sitting there like low key trying to figure out what happened but nobody was really like talking about it i don't know if people were shocked or if it was just like yo you know it's a regular day in the hood and even when we try to figure out like all right why would they want to shoot him like why why the hell would they want to shoot him we still like it didn't register to anybody like yo we almost got shot because they was pointing the gun dead in our direction it didn't register to me until i walked back to the crib and i'm in the crib and i'm like yo Hold on, son. If they didn't start shooting, I might have got hit. Like, I, I literally might have got hit. Like, it didn't register to me until I got back to the house. Now, let's go back to the park. I'm going to explain to y'all exactly what happened and why son that was making the big deal is such a poser that his posing almost got him shot for mistaken identity. Because they weren't even trying to shoot him. It wasn't him they were looking for. I'm going to go back. So remember earlier I said there was a lot of new faces in the park. One of the new faces was this kid. He was like, he's probably my complexion. He had braids. I remember his braids. His braids did not, he didn't have no hang time. He had neck braids. So he was in there playing basketball or whatever. I didn't realize that nobody knew him. In fact, when the kids came, he was the only person that was missing. And I did real I did notice that he kind of ran up out the park. At that time I wasn't paying attention to it until everything happened and then we trying to figure out like yo who are them? Who are those kids? Like why the hell coming to find out. Now he I believe he was he was part of Wave Gang and them kids was they was part of Hood Stars. This was before the Wu and the Cho. So he already knew who they were and he, he seen them. He seen them. They saw him and that's why they kept on circling around to make sure like, okay, is that him for real? Is that, I think that's him. I think that's him, right? He realized that and got up out of there fast. He got up out of there fast. The dude that was making that making that scene, he made it seem like they was after him. He made them even think that he was the one that they were after. That's when like posing just get you. He had nothing to do with none of that. None of that. All he did was show his little his little weed or whatever. And he almost got clapped. Mistaken identity. All he had to do was mind his business. Just relax. I'm good, bro. I'm glad they ain't shoot, bro. That that would have been ugly. There would have been no overdose labs. This is 2011. Psh, there would have been no overdose labs, bro. Cause I don't know what would have happened. There there would have been no place to go except run left or right, bro. That's it. You feel me? Like the we was held. We was pretty much trapped in by the gate, and they were coming in from the playground. 
So it was kind of like it's two way in, it's two ways to get in, two ways to get out. But at the same time, from where they were to to us getting to that exit, the exit was pretty much on the same side as them. So it it'd have been bro, whoo, it'd have been over with.